In this video, we're going to start our discu discussion of plant structure, growth, and development. And because it's such a nice day in Tualatin, in Oregon, and because we are talking about plants, we decided to go ahead and move our videos to outside so we get a little uh, fresh air. Suggest you do the same after watching the video. Um, in this video, we're going to look at uh, some different types of plants and, and some of their growth and development. And with this video, we're going to be specifically focusing on angiosperms. And angiosperms are the flowering plants, and they can be de uh, divided into two major categories, either monocots or dicots. That's really what we're going to focus on in this video, is looking at the differences between monocots and dicots. Uh, monocots, specifically, they only have one seed leaf, or cotyledon. And we'll look at what that means a little bit more specifically closer here in a bit. Uh, dicots, not surprisingly, have two seed leaves, or cotyledons. So monocotyledons and dicotyledons either have one or two seed leaves in their seed. Uh, monocots, some specific things about them, have only one cotyledon. Uh, some examples would include uh, species like corn, wheat, lilies, orchids, and palms. Um, in their embryos, and their seeds, they have one cotyledon. Uh, their veins are usually parallel uh, in arrangement. They have vascular bundles um, uh, in their stems. Uh, they have a fibrous root system, and their floral parts usually are in multiples of three. Um, which is a very distinguishing feature, either, either three leaves or, or multiples of threes. Um, dicots, on the other hand, have two cotyledons, um, and some examples include roses, uh, clovers, tomatoes, oaks, daisies. Uh, they have two cotyledons. Their veins are usually more of a net-like or kind of a branch structure. Um, their vascular bundles and the stems are arranged in a ring structure. Um, and they have a tap, uh, tap root usually present, um, so a long, kind of more uh, vertical root. And their floral parts, their flowers, um, flower leaves, are, are usually arranged in either fours or fives, so very different than the, the monocots. Um, in distinguishing between plants a little bit further, we have both uh, woody and herbaceous plants. And angiosperms can basically be broken down into these two different types, either woody or herbaceous plants. Woody plants are made of cells with six cell walls, uh, that support the cell body. So woody would probably be something like a tree, for example, or a shrub that has a very um, uh, kind of a, a woody uh, branch and, and stem structure to it. Um, trees, shrubs, and vines would be good examples. Herbaceous plants do not produce wood as they grow and instead have smooth stems. So like dandelions or sunflowers, for example, would be some good examples of uh, herbaceous. Uh, plants their lifespans um, can be genetically determined. Um, most plants have some sort of intermediate growth, and they continue to grow as long as they live. Uh, until somebody comes along and cuts them, or something comes along and removes them, they're going to continue to grow. And there's kind of two different types of these. Annuals complete their life cycle in one year. So they have an annual life cycle, and after one year it's done. Some examples, marigolds, cucumbers. Uh, most garden plant species would be examples of, of annuals. Um, biennials complete their life cycle in two years. And so in the first year they're, they're growing uh, and germinating, the roots specifically are growing. In the second year the stems, leaves uh, are growing and they produce flowers and seeds during this time period. And some examples would be like primrose and celery um, would be some good examples. Uh, perennials live for more than, than two years. Um, and some examples would be like major trees, like maple trees, grasses, palm trees, that can continue to live for quite a long different time. Now if we look at the plant structure, there's quite a different parts, a different parts of the plant structure. We've got our flowers and our leaves and some uh, roots here and our stems. Those are probably pretty familiar. Um, but it's kind of can be broken down into two different parts, a root system and a shoot system. So here would be the shoot and here would be the root system. Um, and if we look at a cross-section of a dicot, so we're looking at a dicotyledon, if we're, we're looking at a cross-section of a stem, uh, there's a number of different parts to this. We're going to look at these in, in more detail in lab in class. Um, this outer portion is called the epidermis. Here we have a xylem and a phloem, uh, which we'll talk about a little bit more, that helps in transporting materials. And that makes up the vascular bun bundle of the plant that we previously talked about. The space in between the epidermis and surrounding this vascular bundle, we could refer to as the cortex. Uh, if we look at a dicot leaf, um, we have a couple different portions. An upper epidermis, uh, it's kind of like the outer skin layer. A lower epidermis, uh, a palisade mesophyll. Uh, here's our xylem and our phloem. And then we have a spongy uh, mesophyll that's kind of like on the bottom of the leaf. Uh, we'll also take a look at these in class uh, as well in labs. Another view of these 
different functions. Um, this would be an actual cell view uh, epidermis, the xylem and phloem, the cortex, um, the endodermis, uh, just another view of that, as well as this one here, um, kind of has a nice outline of this, um, including the stomata and the guard cells, which we're going to take a look at closer here as well. And I'll put some of these images on the website so that you can take a closer look at them. Or if you just do a quick Google search, you'll be able to find a lot of these types of images as well. But to break down some of these different structures into what they specifically do, the palisade mesophyll, uh, it's primarily light absorption. Um, and these are tightly packed cells uh, here towards the top. If this is our leaf structure here, uh, these would be kind of towards the top, uh, the upper epidermis. And they're filled with chloroplasts and they're located at the upper surface, uh, primarily for maximum light absorption. They, their job is to absorb that light. Um, they have the photosynthetic pigment, um, and so they're, they're very tightly packed and explains their density. Um, the spongy mesophyll, which is on the bottom portion of the leaf, uh, is primarily for gas exchange within the leaf. And so the spread cells are a little bit more spread out so that the gases can diffuse in and out of, of those spaces and have room to, to do so. Um, and it, they're very centrally positioned near all of the tissues um, so that it can, once the oxygen is diffused within the, the, the leaf, it can be moved throughout the cell. Now, you're probably thinking, well, how does this, how do these different gases get into the cells, uh, into the leaf structure and tissue? Well, they're allowed in or out of the cell by something called the stomata and the guard cells. And the stomata are actually small holes in the leaf structure, and we'll actually be able to see these, uh, hopefully, in a lab that we do. Um, right here is the stomata, and right here is the stomata. And on either side of these are, are these small cells here, and these are guard cells. And really what these are doing are they're, they're openings in the leaf that allow the gases to move in and out of that cell, uh, as well as uh, water vapor. Um, they're usually located at the bottom of the leaf, and at sometimes the guard cells will actually close to reduce the amount of water that's lost. And some plants have actually developed these really unique and cool adaptations where in very hot climates like the desert, for example, they will close their stomata during the day when it's really hot and they could lose moisture very easily, easily so that um, they don't, uh, don't lose all of that moisture. And we'll take a look at those in a little bit more detail as well. Uh, the epidermis is, is kind of the outer portion of that, and it supports um, uh, water conservation. It's the outer layer that helps to protect both the inner mesophyll layers. Uh, it's really thick-walled for support and structure, um, and it can also sometimes secrete a lipid layer, kind of a waxy cuticle is what it's called, on the outside. If you ever go and fill, uh, some plants have that kind of waxy outside feeling to them, and that's secreted by a lipid layer in the epidermis. The vascular bundle, uh, its, its primary function is transport, and it's transporting water and the products of photosynthesis throughout the, the plant. Uh, and there's two main parts to that, the xylem and the phloem. And the xylem is responsible for transporting water, ions, salts, and organic molecules. Uh, the phloem is more responsible for, for transporting the products of photosynthesis um, and sugars. And I suppose uh, the xylem should probably uh, subtract that organic molecules there because that's primarily what the phloem is doing with the products of photosynthesis and those sugars. Um, and so these two structures are very important and help to make up the uh, overall plant and being able to move molecules uh, throughout the plant uh, for the, the various needs. And we'll look at these, of actually how this happens a little bit more closely in some labs and later. The root system has a number of different functions, uh, some of those being primarily just to hold that plant in place. Uh, it's kind of acting like an anchor for that plant. Um, they're also responsible for absorbing minerals and water, storing food, and there's a couple different types of root system. Uh, the fibrous root system is found mostly in monocots uh, here, um, whereas the tap root system is found mostly in dicots. And you can see that the primary difference between this is this one's got a very long uh, root system that's uh, a little bit more vertical, whereas this one's uh, not as extensive uh, in terms of the length of it, uh, but it's a little bit more spread out. And a, a lot of different plants have actually modified uh, the root system um, and stems and leaves as well for some specific functions uh, to help them survive in their environment. And the first one that we're going to look at is a, a bulb modification. And this is a, modif a modification of the leaves, and it's primarily used for food storage. Um, and so, for example, here the, the bulb uh, has been modified in this case is, uh, is an onion, um, and so that the leaves have been modified to kind of produce this bulb for food storage. Um, 
A second example would be stem tubers. And this is an actual modification of the stem. And it's used for, also used for food storage. Um, but they, the, the food storage is usually growing laterally underground. Um, and it's oftentimes to store starch. And so a great example of that is from the potato plant, where these potatoes are representing a, a storage of food or calories. Um, in, in the form of starch, and so those would be two examples. Another example would be the storage of roots, and this is a modified root where the main root becomes swollen with a food reserve. And so a great example of this, and one of my favorite foods, is carrots. Um, this is a, a, another example of a modification of, a, of the root system in order to store food reserve. Um, the tendrils is uh, a modification of the stem or the leaf. It kind of depends on the plant, but basically you can think of this as a way for that plant to climb up or to be able to um, move up and, and kind of it spread itself uh, out. Um, and we sometimes see this in pea plants. Um, a lot of times we'll put up um, support systems for these plants and for these uh, kind of uh, modifications of the stem and the leaf to be able to attach to so it can support them and hold them up. And so here's a good example here as well. And so now that we've been talking about roots, roots, excuse me, um, we can take a closer look at how they actually are able to grow. And there's three areas of growth, um, a zone of cell division, um, which includes both the, ap uh, includes the apical meristem, uh, and this is the portion towards the bottom uh, tip of, of this area. Um, and how this actually works is that uh, the cells are dividing by mitosis, and you can look at these, and we will look at these, you can look at them under a microscope. And this is an area of, a, of a, usually it's onion root tip that you look at, um, but you can actually see the uh, cells dividing. Um, you can see a lot of cells undergoing mitosis. The, cell, uh, the zone of elongation, the cells are actually getting longer or expanding. And as you, if you're looking at this under a microscope, you can actually see that these cells are longer in length than those in the zone of, of cell division. Um, and then the last zone is, is when the cells begin to differentiate and become specialized for their specific area and, and for their specific need. Um, overall, the root is protected by a cap, which helps to protect the apical meristem. Um, as the plant grows down into the soil. And we're going to talk about an apical mary system here in just a second. This shoot system consists of um, vegetable shoots, which eventually bear leaves, um, uh, floral shoots, and the stems kind of have three important functions. Um, the production of leaves, flowers, and branches uh, would be one. Holding leaves up uh, for the sunlight so that they can actually photosynthesize and collect that sunlight. And then the transportation of substances between the, the roots and the leaves. Uh, so now here comes that question of how do these stems actually go, grow. And the apical mary stem is, is, uh, can be found in two different locations, at the top of the plant and at the very bottom of the plant. And this is an increase in length uh, to the primary form of growth. And it occurs by cell division uh, in the apical mary stem. And so those cells are dividing by mitosis. Um, and it produces an epidermis, it produces ground tissue, uh, the primary xylem and phloem. Um, and it also produces the initial tissue in growing plants. Now, that's just vertical growth, uh, but there's also a possibility for stems to grow outward. And this is what we call lateral Mary stems. And these are actual portions where the plant is growing laterally and expanding. Um, and this is a secondary growth. Um, and it's really kind of the growth in the circumference um, uh, of the strength of the stem. It's, it's moving outwards. Um, and so it, it occurs in a specific area called the cambium between the xylem and the phloem. Um, and it forms the secondary xylem and phloem. And it occurs more actively in older stems and roots most, uh, generally. Um, the last topic that we want to look at for this, for this uh, video is why do we see, if we put a plant um, by a window, uh, or maybe a few feet away from a window, why do we see and what causes that plant to actually kind of grow towards uh, the window and, and try to capture that light. And you can try this if you've never done it at home. Take a plant and, and kind of put it a few feet away from the window. Um, hopefully that plant is, is pretty vertical. And after a, a week or so, a couple weeks, see what happens. See what actually happens to that plant. Um, the stem of plant shows a, a positive attraction to light. Obviously that plant needs light in order to be able to grow. Um, and auxin is a, is a plant growth substance that promotes cell elongation and is produced by the Mary stems. Um, but what we can see happen is this plant is growing towards the light. Uh, it actually bends in such a way that um, the top portion uh, will actually bend towards the light. And the way this actually works is that 
um, oxygen secretes hydrogen ions that diffuse through the cell wall of the cells, causing a loosening of the cell wall and the space for elongation. So um, these are normal sized cells and these cells have, have been secreted at oxygen so they're more loose and they're actually to bend and elongate uh, so that the plant can grow towards that light substance. We'll take a look at these topics a little bit more in detail in labs and in future videos.